Hello, everyone. If you like what I'm doing here, please consider subscribing, liking, and commenting. It would really help the channel out quite a bit. Thank you very much. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is your friend, The Last Nan, again, speaking from the Bric-a-Brac Little Theater. The good old Bric-a-Brac Little Theater, owned and operated by Mr. Frank Buck. You all know Frank Bric-a-Brac Alive Buck, of course. My, it certainly is getting close in here. The heat, I guess. Oh, no, it isn't the heat, it's the humidity. Oh, no, on second thought, it isn't the humidity, it's the gag. Oh, no, it isn't the gag. It's love and bloom. Well, said Twerp, rearing his ugly head. That's a pretty speech, and that's the best I can say for it. As a matter of fact, I won't have time to say anything more for it because I'm being crowded in a rather rude manner by Jimmy Greer. No touch of that baton now, James. It seems that his rhythm rascals are just absolutely aching to dust out that old piano tonight. Very well. Heave-ho, then, lads. <laughs> James, very commendable. I have to say that. He's standing so close here. Well, we have something in the nature of a surprise here for you now. No, it's not red sails in the sunset. It's a couple of little things that have been standing around here sticking their ears out at me for the last three programs. Yes, I'm afraid you've guessed it. It's the gable and tone of Taney County, Arkansas, Oscar and Elmer. The far when ready, Gridley. I mean, Oscar. <laughs> Elmer, the man's ready. Well, don't don't be trying to rush my rush, 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 Oscar. Anyhow, you're not the dad blame fast tonight yourself. What's 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 the matter with you, anyhow? Elmer, my legs is tired and my feet to killing. <laughs> if you don't quit a court in that uh, that uh, city gal, you're gonna walk yourself plumb to death. That'll make cough sore. If the dog gone big and good looking, you gotta be you gotta be asking me. Uh, you gotta be asking me now. Extra careful, anyhow. Well, gosh, Elmer, it'd be all right if I could just go to her house and set. But she wants me to carry her to the moving pictures and dances and stuff, and my feet just won't stand. <laughs> Trouble you, Oscar. You don't know nothing about you don't know nothing about crossing that court. And I bet you ain't even flew out, lift your arm around her yet. Ha ha ha! No, I ain't. But I bet I could. No, not yet. I only went with my gal team three months ago. I put my arm around her. We were sitting on the sofa one night, and I kind of let my arm drop, drop down behind her. She didn't know it was there and leaned back on it, and I was scared to tell her to move. And we sat like that for, like that for five hours. 
And if she hadn't had to go do the milking, I reckon we'd have been in some house sitting there yet. That's what she gets for being a lost ladies' man. Yeah, but I can't never think of nothing to talk to gals about. You you and ask you could I can. Last time I was sitting with Keen, we talked about hunting. Did I ever tell you about the about Keen's pointer pig? No. What's a pointer pig? Well, Keen took a little old runny pig, didn't look like it was ever going to mouth mouth or nothing, took it to the house and made it a bed in the west, west wood box, bottle fed it for six weeks, pulled it through and got it all healthy and, uh, all healthy and, uh, and affectionate. She is a regular mother to it, huh? That certainly was. She named it Hortense and fought it to hunt yeah, just like a dog. Oscar, she'd bring in more game of that pig in the garden rake than anybody in the county could with an arm loaded sh- uh, shotgun. I went a-hunting with, 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 with that pig and her one morning. Dad blamed things just trot along in front of us and wag his tail and just grunt. Grunt. Had a nose for games, too. It'd smell a rabbit, stop, come to a point, uncurl that little old tail and stick it out just as straight as an arrow, stand there and say, stand there and say, uh? Just grunt and hunt, huh? Uh, and it was a trotting along in front of us this morning, just, just like usual, trotted up to a bus, big brush pile, come to a point and says, uh? Backed off a couple of steps and got the silliest grin on his face and says, 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 uh-uh. Well, I run up that brush pile with a garden rake, and Oscar the pig was um right. It was a skunk. <laughs> I had to stay over to Teen's house for three days while her mom ma sewed me up some new house overalls out of some flower sack. If I'd listened to that pig, I wouldn't have had to have my, my burnt my clothes. Well, I reckon I could talk to my gal about pigs, but she ain't got no pig. Oscar, the only thing I see for you to do is get a gal that's got a pig. <laughs> Well, you better stuff some cotton in your ears now because I'm just about to throw a bit of a dram at you customers. I don't know, Musclehead. I don't think you've got time. How do you like that? Haven't got time. Time is one thing I've got plenty of. Wait a minute. You mean time is the thing you've got plenty of or the thing you're going to do plenty of? Mm Mm-hmm, I get it. Look, we're getting no place fast and I always get dizzy when I ride backwards. Do you mind if I change seats with you? Yeah, a great trick if you can do it. Well, here we go again. My gosh, why don't you ever give me a compliment? Why don't you say something nice to me just for a change? Well, I was holding back. I did hear something nice about you. I understand you're a pretty terrific golfer, is that right? Oh, you know how those things get noised around. Why? Oh, I just heard you went around that tough Pebble Beach golf course in 81. Well, of course, I wasn't really trying to... Wait a minute, what was that? Look, did you go around the Pebble Beach golf course in 81? My gosh, no, I wasn't even born then. Annie, you're certainly getting dumb. Me dumb? Me dumb? Why, you're so dumb you think that General Motors is in the French Army. Wait a minute, Annie. That hurt. That's pretty dumb. By the way, what army is he in? What army is he? Hey, who said that? Flash Jordan. Day after day, the battle raged in the arena, with Flash Jordan always in the midst of the battle, tearing apart with his bare hands huge three-headed schlemiels. Crushing to the ground with his heel the ferocious twerps which roamed the arena. Swords were shattered like paper. Lances were splintered like, uh, like lances. And then on the eve of the third day, Flash Jordan paused to have a conference with the chief of the Affendaffords. To find Flash and the chief deep in conversation, about six feet over Flash's head. Uber, Luber, Oogie, Herb. Oh, chief, I'm Flash Jordan. Ugg, Ugg. 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 Um. Oh, trying to change the subject, eh? You rascal. Well, I've got to compliment you, Chief. It certainly is a gala day. Yes, sir, a gala day. And do I love a gala day? Yeah, and eight or nine on Saturday night. Yeah, and eight or... N- Let's not have too much trouble from you, my little hollyhock. And that goes for you, too, Chief. Curses, confusion, consternation. What did you say? Nothing. Well, you took an awful long time to say it. He swore. I swear he swore. Flash Jordan, it gives me great pleasure to make you a little gift in honor of your deeds of valor. I hereby present you with a hunky twosum. And pray tell, what is a hunkly twosum? A hunkly twosum is a revolver. Only he who shoots, shoots himself. Yeah, if I had one, I'd lend it to you, twerp. I don't need it. I've got troubles of my own. Look, I've got to clear out the arena. It's just simply crawling with celebrities. I just saw Ben Burney over there riding a horse. Was Winchell with him? Sure. Well, what was Winchell doing? He was riding Bernie. I guess I got that one in there. I said, I guess I got that one in. Hey, are you there? If you're not there, say so. Quiet, Flash. Get a load of this. Chief has got his name tattooed in his eyelid. I see. Just another publicity hound. You're probably thinking of last week's script, Jughead. Why should you call the chief a publicity hound? I only said he had his name tattooed in his eyelid. Sure, that's so he can get his name in the papers. Some stuff, eh, Pussy Bunny? 
I clipped that one out of the Lamar, Missouri Daily Democrat. I got a Jim Dandy goodie when I'm saving for next week that I swiped out of the Associated Pool Cue Makers Quarterly. It'll tear you to pieces. Wait a minute, Fuzzface. What are you doing, giving a preview? Give me a chance to do something. Look, I want to do an imitation of a chicken. You want to do an imitation of a chicken? Very well, he said graciously, buying from the waist and almost breaking in two. An imitation of a chicken it shall be. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we come to the more serious portion of Flash Jordan's adventure. Miss Annie Boom, the little lady to my left, with the buck teeth and protruding bangs, is going to do an imitation of a chicken. Go ahead, Annie. Moo. Moo. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You said an imitation of a chicken. Yeah. Wasn't that foul? Yeah, was it? Mm-hmm. This is Earth sending a mission to Flash Jordan from his father. Quote, you don't have to take any more of those bum gags. Come home, son. We have a new district attorney. Unquote. Drown us out, Jimmy. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.